Okay, let's move on to 3.2, right? 3.2 says, let me just move this across here so you can see. It says, Annex C shows the assembly diagrams for floor lamp. Use Annex C to answer the questions that follow. So, as always, just go find Annex C. And there is Annex C, right? It is this sort of flow of how to put together all these different parts to get this floor lamp, right? I hate doing these questions because I'm not very good at construction. But that's neither here nor there, right? So, it says, refer to diagram 4. Right, so you see here there's numbers one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we're looking over here, and then we're going to answer these questions. Right, so be very careful here to make sure that you are actually labeling your questions correctly, right? Because students often get that wrong. So for this one, it says, Must the nut be screwed or unscrewed? Right, so <clears throat> firstly, here it shows you what each of the constituent parts are at the top. So it's basically saying this. So it's saying, is this being screwed or unscrewed? <laughs> it sounds a little bit strange, but it's lefty loosey, righty tighty, right? So here, because it's going to the left, right? So you can see that it's going anti-clockwise, right? We know that it's going to make it loose. If you're making something loose, you're unscrewing it. So actually the answer here is unscrewed. So there's a little bit of like a practical um, sort of view here, which again, I mean, that is MATLAB for you, right? It is a quite a practical subject. So that is the, the sort of rationale there. If it's going the other way around, like over here, that would then be screwing it, okay? So very important to see the difference there. So let's go on to the next question. Give the direction in which the nut should be turned, right? So over here, you can see it's to the left. So you can say left, you can say anti-clockwise, um, as long as it sort of indicates the movement, you can say either of those. You can also say counterclockwise if you want, but that's kind of what it's indicating. Be careful to label that correctly. I told you to label it correctly and then I labeled it incorrectly. Standard. Okay, let's move on. So then it says, how many screws are needed to assemble the lampshade? So now, careful that you're seeing what screws look like. So they look like this. Okay, and let's see all the different screws that are taken into account here. So... Originally, when I did this, I actually mixed up nuts and screws. So just be careful not to do that. So there's one there, there's one there, and there's one there. Okay, so there's three screws. And that's the only three screws that we see. Okay, so in total, there are three. So it's just about sort of reading and interpreting and making sure that we can follow what's actually happening here. Okay. Let's look at the next question. Which diagram is associated with the instruction join the stand to the base? Okay, so where is the stand and the base? Where do they come together? So it's not there, it's not there, it's there, right? Because it shows you there that the stand is being connected to the base. So we would say it would be in diagram three, or you can just say three. I think diagram three is probably the best way of writing it. So you can say diagram three. Okay, so there's that. Then let's move on to the last question. Okay, so we're speeding through this. Although this is a space where actually students often quite sort of struggle because it's this element of practicality. So if you're a very practical person, this is like a great question for you. Let's go to 3.2.4. The total height of the floor lamp in the picture is 62 millimeters. Determine the actual height in meters, oh goodness, of the floor lamp if the scale of the diagram is one to 30, okay? So what we're going to do here is I think let's convert that first into meters and then go from there. Okay, so it's basically saying if it's 62 millimeters in the picture, it's 30 times bigger in, in reality. Okay, so basically we need to work out how big it is in reality. That's what it's asking us to do. So I'm going to start by saying 62 millimeters <clears throat> is 6.2 centimeters. Okay, how did I get there? You divide by 10 because there are 10 millimeters and one centimeter. Then if I want to get into meters, I then have to divide by 100, right? Because there's 100 centimeters and one meter. So it's going to become 0 0.062 meters. Okay, so that's what it is in the picture. If we want it in reality, we then say 0 0.062, we times it by 30, right? Because we know that in reality, it's 30 times bigger. We know that in, <laughs> I think what students sometimes get confused about is whether they should times or divide. But if you think about something being bigger, multiplication makes sense, right? You're making it bigger. You shouldn't have something being smaller in reality than it is on the on the diagram, right? So put this into your calculator and that is your answer. So in reality, 
it is 1.6 meters which makes sense as a floor lamp right it's quite tall um makes sense right and that's this question done right easy peasy